guys, and welcome back to See Mindy Mom. And if you're new here, I'm very glad that you found me. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm super excited to be bringing you a video of quick and easy family meals. And this is in collaboration with a YouTube buddy of mine, Jen, over at Cook, Clean, and Repeat. So stay tuned. Tis the season to be busy. Ba, la, 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 la. And I know that it's the holidays and we have extra obligations. We have those school programs. We have those parties. We have those dinners that we're hosting company that's coming into town. We have those flagship holiday meals with the turkey or the prime rib or the steaks or the roast beef or whatever. But there's a lot of other meals that we need to feed our household, ourselves, our families, our company. Am I right? And not every meal can be this big, fantastic Christmas feast. If you're like us, you have some busy nights all year long and the holidays are no different. So maybe you need something really easy to throw together for your family on one of those nights. That's what I'm sharing with you in this video. I made some really quick and easy, but tasty meals that are kid friendly, that help us stay out of the drive through which helps our pocketbooks in the long run, and that kept us fed on very busy evenings during this season. If you're coming over here from Jen's channel, hi, so glad that you found me. I'm Mindy, I'm married to my husband, Daniel. We have three children who are 12, nine, and eight. So when I say we are a busy family, I'm not kidding. <laughs> So a lot of my channel here at See Mini Mom revolves around what I'm doing in my kitchen to save time and to save money and preferably both. If you are new to my channel, I hope that you will have a look around and take a look at some of our videos and see if there is something interesting or helpful here for you. And I hope that you will hit that subscribe button and also click that little bell for notifications so you know when new videos are going up because I don't always post on the same days or the same times. And I want to say thank you to Jen at Cook, Clean, and Repeat for doing this video with me. This is sort of another one of those surreal YouTuber experiences for me because Jen is somebody that I have watched for years now. Jen lives in North Carolina with her husband and her two daughters, and we actually have something in common there because we both have a daughter named McKenna. She is a fabulous, talented homemaker, and as the title of her channel, Cook, Clean, and Repeat suggests, she does lots of different kinds of videos revolving around what she's doing in her home. Clean with me videos, cook with me videos. She does fantastic decorate with me videos and house tours for how she's decorating her home for the different seasons. Her cooking videos definitely resonate with me because they are really delicious down-home family meals with a little bit of Southern flair. So after you watch this video, make sure you go and visit her channel. Let her know that I sent you. I will leave a link in the description box below. I also wanna take a second to remind you guys that my pantry cooking ebook that I put out last week is still on sale for 50% off for a couple of days whenever you use the code Mindy Mom Pantry. So if you're new to my channel and you don't know about this, I do a lot of pantry cooking challenge videos where I try to use what I already have on hand and use up odds and ends of different foods in my kitchen to create meals for my family. And I recently went back through a year's worth of pantry cooking videos and made this little recipe book with 20 of my favorite recipes from those videos. So I will leave a link to that in the description box as well. And don't forget to use that code Mindy Mom Pantry. It's good for a couple more days when this video is going up. All right, quick and easy family meals is the name of the game. So let's dive in. Tonight I am making something that I used to make all the time, but I think it's been several months, if not over a year since I've done this. It is called Pizza Braid. It is a very quick, easy, kid-friendly meal. It's also very versatile because you can use whatever toppings or fillings you like or that you have on hand. So let me show you what I'm using to make that and how I'm making it and we'll get it all plated up. It's gonna be super fast, easy, and yummy. This is pretty much it right here, you guys. I am going to use this pizza crust, and I find this in the same place where you find biscuits and crescent rolls. So you need one of these. You can do two if you want. I'm just making one tonight because I only need to feed myself and the children, and this will make enough for the four of us. You can put whatever kind of toppings you want in it. This time, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple and just do pepperonis and mozzarella cheese. Normally, I would just grate up a block like this and use that or use some already grated mozzarella cheese, but I have this one in my refrigerator that came in a 
an Imperfect box recently and I wanna use it. So I'm gonna kind of chop that up into little pieces to be able to sprinkle that in my pizza braid. And for the sauce, I'm just gonna take a few tablespoons of this tomato paste and add a tablespoon or two of water, just kind of reconstitute it until it's like a sauce mixture. You could use a marinara if you want. You could use fresh tomatoes. You could use like a can of diced tomatoes and maybe puree a little bit of it. You could leave the sauce out, it's up to you. One of the things that I like about this particular thing is that it's really versatile. I have done a taco version before with ground beef and beans and cheddar cheese. I've done a chicken one before with Alfredo sauce and mozzarella and chicken. I've even done kind of a Hawaiian barbecue one before with some leftover pulled pork and pineapple and barbecue sauce. So we're gonna keep it simple tonight, but the idea is the same. So let me show you how I actually create the pizza break. And then one little extra thing that I add just to make it even yummier. Okay, first off the part that none of us like. <laughs> there we go. Got my crust here. I'm gonna just get it out of the tube, just like so. I've got my parchment paper here. I like to roll my crust out a little bit thinner. You can see that it's really pretty thick right now, so I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit of flour on this, and I'm gonna roll it out just a little bit thinner so it will make a nice long pizza braid here. So I have my pizza cutter here, and what I'm gonna do is make little strips from the outer edge towards the middle, but not all the way across the middle like so. And I'm gonna go down both sides of the dough here. I just like to turn it around like this, Boop. since I'm right-handed. It's okay if they're not perfectly even. We're not into perfection in this house. I just don't have time for it in this season of my life. Okay, I've got my sauce right here. I didn't bother seasoning it because the pepperonis I think are gonna be plenty salty. I'm just gonna put that right down the center. This is where all the toppings are gonna go. Got my mozzarella here that I just kind of gave a quick chop to so it would be just in little clumps. Put that all down the center. And I only had to use about half of my mozzarella and half of my pepperonis. That's gonna be plenty for this. Then I've got my pepperonis here and I like to chop mine up into little pieces just cause I think it makes it easier to spread them out more evenly. As I said, if you bought one more pizza crust, you could make two pizzas with the pepperonis and the cheese that I showed you. And then to make the braid, all I do is I alternate folding the dough across like so. Basically you're making a calzone <laughs> or a, strom a stromboli. I'm just gonna slide this onto a baking sheet like so. See how easy that was? Now this part is totally optional, but I just like to do this because it adds a little extra to it. I've got about two tablespoons of melted butter in here and I'm just gonna brush that over the top like this all the way down. And then I'm gonna sprinkle just some good old grated Parmesan cheese on top. And now this is ready to go into the oven. I'm gonna pop it in at 400 degrees. Mine usually take about 14 or 15 minutes. I don't like giving finite cooking times. You'll wanna check on it at about 10 minutes and then every few minutes after that until it is done to the crispness that you like your pizza crust. Okay, here it is. I have two pieces of my pizza braid right here. And then I just took the easy road, I usually do with this, and I just did some steam in the bag veggies and a cut up apple there on the side. And that's gonna be dinner tonight, yummy. Tonight I am making a ground beef gnocchi recipe. It is a one pot meal. I found this recipe at Salt and Lavender and I will leave a link in the description box. Per the usual, I'm probably gonna make some adjustments or substitutions along the way, but be sure to go and check it out. I have found some pretty great recipes over the years at that website. And I love that it utilizes gnocchi and gnocchi is one of those things that I forget is such a great shortcut for meals. It cooks really quickly. It's very inexpensive and it's actually somewhat shelf stable depending on the package that you buy. But I paid $1.88 at Walmart for the package that I have, but I've actually seen Yoki at Dollar Tree for $1 for the same size package. And when I'm buying it in that vacuum sealed package, I can actually store it in my pantry for several months. So it's one of those things that I have started to keep on hand, like have a package of it because it's kind of a blank palette. It's kind of like rice or pasta and that it's going to take on the flavors of the other things that you're cooking it with. Okay, here's what I'm using tonight, you guys. I have one pound 
of ground beef and I chose a leaner ground beef because there's other things that are pretty rich in this recipe. You could cut this back to half a pound. Normally I would do that, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the full pound tonight. If you wanted a less expensive option, you could also opt for ground sausage. That's, that's cheaper in my area, at least than ground beef. And then you would just cut back on the seasonings. One, one pound, it's about one pound. It's like 17 ounces of gnocchi, potato gnocchi. I'm gonna use about a teaspoon, maybe two teaspoons of minced garlic. I will use one cup of half and half. I've got some Parmesan cheese here. I'm gonna shred about a half a cup of this. One can of diced tomatoes. I'm gonna use two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, salt and pepper to taste. And I'm also gonna throw in a little bit of this minced onion because I am out of fresh onions. Can you guys believe that? I don't have any onions. We've used them all up. So it's time to go to the store. All right, you guys, it's 5.03 when I'm starting this dinner. And in my pot here, I have my one pound of ground beef beef and about a tablespoon of my minced dried onion. I went ahead and threw that in there with it because it will reconstitute with some of the um, moisture that it renders as it cooks. So I'm going to brown that up and then we'll add some other ingredients. My meat is almost done browning and I'm going to go ahead and add my garlic. This is about a heaping teaspoon. It's about one to two cloves of garlic minced if you're using fresh. And my seasonings, I used two teaspoons of Italian seasoning and then just some salt and pepper, probably about a half a teaspoon salt and then just cracked black pepper. So I'm going to let that kind of brown here along with the meat as it is finishing up cooking. Okay, the meat is done. So into the pot along with it goes my diced tomatoes my gnocchi, come on, man down, boop, and one cup of half and half, yum. I'm gonna give that a stir and bring it up to a simmer. All right, we are simmering, so I'm gonna turn the heat down to low, and I'm gonna cover that, and we're gonna let it simmer for four or five minutes and then check on it, and while that is going on, I'm going to shred my cheese, and it is only 515. Okay, it's been five minutes. I'm just gonna check this out and give it a stir. Ooh, yay, it's coming along nicely. It's not really scalding or sticking to the bottom here. Looks like the gnocchi is nice and soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my cheese. I'm just gonna stir that in. And then what I'm gonna do is turn the heat completely off, but I'm gonna put the lid back on so that it just steams for a couple of minutes before we are ready to serve that. There we go. Pop the lid on and it is 524. Okay, you guys, here it is. I've already tried it and it is fantastic. I definitely think that I could have used just half the ground beef or doubled up on the gnocchi and the tomatoes and maybe added another half cup of liquid or half and half and you know doubled the recipe but only used the same amount of meat. I think maybe I've just gotten used to using less meat, but it's really, really good. I mean, it feels very indulgent because we're using more meat than we would normally use, but this came together really quickly. As you saw, I showed you the clock as I was making it and it is super tasty. So I realized that spaghetti is nothing new as far as family-friendly meals are concerned, but I thought I would share something that I do sometimes to make this meal come together really quickly for us, to make it easier for us to have on busier nights, and that is that I will prepare the sauce in the slow cooker. That way I can get the sauce simmering in the afternoon or early evening so that it's ready to go whenever we want to have dinner, and also it makes it really flavorful because it simmers on low for several hours. I recently got a new slow slow cooker that I'm very excited about. It's from Instant Pot. It's an Instant Pot or a slow cooker, and it has all of these extra settings on it besides slow cooking. One of those functions is a saute function, which allows me to brown ground beef or to sear meat for recipes right there in the slow cooker so that I don't have to do that on the stove and then transfer it. And then I can just change the setting to slow cook on the Instant Pot or a slow cooker, and I can go ahead and add the other ingredients for my recipe. I am one of those people when it comes to spaghetti sauce, 
I don't always use the exact same ingredients or the exact same amounts of tomato products. On this night, I used a can of diced tomatoes, about half a can of tomato paste that I had left over from another recipe. I seasoned that with some Italian seasoning, some salt and pepper, and a little bit of red pepper flake. I decided that I wanted my sauce to be just a little bit thinner, a little bit saucier, like I didn't have enough tomato products in there. So I also added an eight ounce can of tomato sauce that I had in the pantry. And then I added just about two or three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese and maybe two ounces of cream cheese that I had hanging out in the refrigerator. I let that simmer on low all afternoon. We were out of the house for activities and when we came back, our sauce was done. And all I had to do was make up the pasta to go along with it, maybe throw a bag of steam in the bag veggies in the microwave, have some garlic toast to go along with it. On really busy nights, I can even make the pasta ahead of time and store it in the refrigerator until we're ready to eat it. So all we have to do is reheat it. But this is something that I will do sometimes whenever I have time earlier in the day to throw something together, but I'm not gonna have time at dinner time to prep the meal. And it always makes for a really delicious spaghetti. Tonight, we are going to do a very quick sheet pan dinner. And if you are thinking, sheet pan dinners, like we know about those. Mindy, what are you talking about? Stay with me because I'm gonna tell you some things that I do to make those even faster for my family on really busy nights. First off, we're gonna use some smoked sausage. If you watch my channel, you know that I love these things, that I use them a lot in my cooking. Um, one of the things that I like about them is that they are fully cooked already. So I don't have to worry about these rising to a certain temperature. They are already fully cooked. I'm basically just reheating them in whatever recipe I'm using them in. They're also already seasoned, so I don't have to season them. I don't have to marinate them. I don't have to like sear them or saute them or anything like that. I'm gonna dice them up and then they are ready to go. Secondly, when it comes to the kinds of veggies that I'm gonna put on my sheet pan, I am going to be particular because I want something that's gonna cook fast. Potatoes and carrots and even Brussels sprouts, they take a little longer to roast than other vegetables. So tonight I'm actually going to be using some zucchini and some bell peppers because these are things that roast pretty quickly. These cook in the oven to the tenderness that we prefer in like about five minutes. And that's about as long as I want my smoked sausage to be on the foil lined cookie sheet as well because um, it, it doesn't take very long for it to reheat also. We are going to be walking in from swim practice right around dinner time, and my swimmers are super hungry. Whenever they get home from practice, I don't blame them. They're in the pool for anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes, and that's a pretty good workout. But I do have a little time before they head out to practice. I have some time kind of in the interim after I drop them off, but before I go back and pick them up. So what I'm gonna do is actually prep the sheet pan ahead of time with the smoked sausage chopped up, with the zucchini and the peppers chopped up, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, maybe some of this Tony seasoning sprinkled on top of it. And I'm just gonna leave that ready to pop into the oven whenever we get back. So when I head out the door, I can go ahead and get the oven preheating. When I come back, I can pop that in the oven and those things are gonna be ready in less than 10 minutes. And then for a starch to go alongside this, I'm gonna take the super easy route and we're just gonna do some instant mashed potatoes. I have two different packages of these in my pantry. These are just super easy. I already have them and I can cook these according to the package directions while the smoked sausage and the vegetables are roasting in the oven and we'll have dinner ready in like less than 15 minutes. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, thank you so much to Jen for collaborating with me on this video. Be sure to go to her channel. It's linked in the description box. Go check out her video about quick and easy family meals. Let her know that I sent you and show her a little bit of love. And I will check in with you guys with another video very soon. Bye.